Okay, good afternoon. The Design Review Board number one public meeting of October 2nd is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves during the meeting, and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on any specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our DRB hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 7 or 15 calendar days of the design review board decision date, depending when the case was filed. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. Roll call. <coughs> board member Aliano. Here. Board Member Ellis. Present. Board Member Insua is absent. Board Member Simonian is also absent. Board Member Yu. Here. Report regarding the posting <clears throat> of agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on September 25, 2008. Oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. The board may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The board may refer the matter to the proper department section for investigation and report. Uh, does we, anyone have one, we have one we, card for we oral We do have one card for oral communication. Point of order. May I uh, move that we anoint Mr. Aliano as, oh, uh, thank you. as thank chair you pro tem? Thank you for mentioning that, board member. Uh, yes, we do need a chairman pro tem simply because our chairperson, uh, Simonian, is not here. So I have a motion by Board Member Ellis, uh, second, second by Board Member Yu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you, and thank you, Mr. Eliano, for accepting that position. <laughs> Forever and grateful for you. Definitely. Uh, so to continue on with the matter, we have one card for oral communication. Yes, um, Myrna Stanley, please. And again, this would be a, allowed three minutes. Oh, I won't even take one, I don't think. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and board members. My name is Myrna Stanley, and I represent Verdugo Woodlands West Homeowners Association. And I just wanted to distribute um, to you and to Ms. Reich, if you would give her one, a booklet that our board has compiled on some um, lingering concerns that we've had regarding residential development. Um, and we hope that you'll take the time to look at it. And we will go to DRB2 on next Thursday. Um, there, this is dated October 2nd because I, the council will get a copy each and the city attorney, city manager. But I was there on Tuesday and they were discussing the smoking ordinance and boxing. I thought, oh my God, be there till I'd have a birthday. I was waiting so long. So if you would take care of this and, and distribute it amongst yourselves, I'd be very much appreciated. Thank you, Thank you very so we much. Have one booklet. One booklet. So we just have to make copies. Is that what you would be more like? than happy to make copies okay, and distribute that? that? Thank you. Is that a, you have an original there? Make copies for that. Thank you. Okay. Review calendar. There are no staff announcements, and there are no items on the consent calendar, which brings us to the regular calendar. A regular agenda for the Design Review Board. Um, the first case. Okay. You're up. <laughs> I'll let Gabe Reza back. introduce it okay. for you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Design Review Board. The next case, or the first case item before you, is case number 1 dash PDR 2007 158 A, located at 1242 Winchester Avenue. Um, if I may direct the board's attention, uh, the board. so I may go over the plans that were submitted. Um, we have full elevations here, um, and I'll go over the scope of work as well. Um, a site plan 
that has the overlay showing the floor plan and detail inside, um, a location map, and some photographs of the window details. I will hand the board a packet of materials. On to the project description. The project proposes a one-story addition along the west elevation of a one-story single-family house. There is currently a two-car garage that has access from Winchester Avenue that will propose to be remained. Staff could not find permits for any of the vinyl windows. If the owner cannot provide roof, proof of the vinyl windows that were installed illegally during the time of plan check, the homeowner will be able to comply with that at the time of plan check. Um, the reason being that, as you can see in the photographs, they have one um, of the not finding it from the yeah, close-up up there. Okay, as far as the overall project construction, the project summary is the proposal is to construct a 408-square-foot addition. Um, that's basically right here shown on the existing site plan. Um, this is where it goes. There is an existing 6-foot-high fence um, that currently shields um, where the addition will go. Um, the staff report indicates that there is uh, no or oak, bay, or sycamore trees on site, but during the staff uh, visit, found that there is a sycamore plant or sycamore tree located far at the rear side of the property that does not seem to be any concern um, close as far as in, the, in the proximity of the addition. I right, can go over some of the comments regarding mass and scale and site planning. In regards to site planning, the overall location of the addition appears to be an improvement to the existing condition. However, staff recommends that the placement of the addition should be set back further. This modification will help to reduce, reduce the massing along the front facade. Second, mass and scale. The project mass and scale is broken down into a single volume. The modest addition possesses the same roof pitch and slope that will complement the existing design. The overall design is appropriate and fits well within the neighborhood. Context. The architectural style. The architecture of the addition is consistent with the eclectic style of the existing building and appears well designed and appropriate for the neighborhood context as well. Overall summary. The modest addition to the existing house will be designed with materials and details that reinforce and enhance the architectural style and design of the house. The mass and scale did not increase significantly as a result of the addition appears to be appropriate to the neighborhood. Staff recommends approval of this project with one condition, the condition being that the addition be set back further. Do you have an idea how much further? Um, I believe Sorry, during, during the design studio and, and design okay. process, um, we had the addition set back to somewhat align with the rear elevation facade. Uh -huh. Therefore, in, in, in an elevation view, um, it would be shifted back this way and it would continue, we could, it would have the roof pitch continue or mimic the existing roof style. So if I'm correcting this, you're saying back that, to that, back so this piece is out, but, but it's, it's reversed. Split, exactly, it's okay. flipped. It's flipped the applicant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, basically moving the addition back, having this shifted back here, but then having the the pitch of the roof also reversed here. So then all you would see is the flat roof area then from the front, right? Correct. That would be just flat. So the elevation would be quite different. You would see the, the high stucco wall here. This. You won't see that. Right. You'll see this elevation because it's reversed. But the reason for putting it back is for what? Uh, for massing. We had massing concerns. Um, that we just all looked at all the mass and setting it back further would help reduce. There is a change in our rating. You know, this is a different location. Did you? Uh, here's the. Yeah, I saw this. Yes, okay. the, the applicant. Just to proceed with. I, I got a quick question for you, maybe this is for the applicant. I see three different types of window treatments around the windows. I see what's existing on the house today, 
on the drawings that we took home. Now they look different here, and I'm just, is it just our textural? I believe, yes. The, the, are they planning to do something to the window treatments? No, the, the intent of the window selection is to match the existing condition, which is best reflected in this uh, in the photograph. In the photograph. These are the vinyl ones, the ones they cannot find a permit? Yes. So you said if they can't find a permit, what's going to happen? Well, they would definitely just, and at the time of plan check, it would just include, simply include that fee into the Okay. And then matching the vials. The vials are all around the house. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay. Are there any questions? To address at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Iraq, um, Palestinian. I'm sorry if I butcher that. <laughs> um, Could you say your name for the record? Palestinian. Palestinian. Um, you are says. Uh, oh, you're the, the so owner. you're the owner. Okay. I'm the owner's son. Okay. Would you like to make a, pr a brief presentation, or did you want to? If you have any questions, I think he covered the basis. If you have any questions, okay. I'll answer. Uh, any questions? I guess I, I just want to reiterate uh, the window. You're, you want it to look like the existing picture, so the drawing, these are not quite what it's going to look like. I mean, It's, it's going to match with the existing. Existing. So you're not adding anything to those existing windows on the front facade. No. Okay. And then the new building will have the same thing. That, that same, okay. Yeah, because I noticed it wasn't like that. Basically, the reasoning, um, uh, one thing I wanted to, to comment, the reasoning we didn't want to take it back because of the plumbing uh, and the laundry room in the front the existing. If we move it back, the plumbing has to go back, and it, it will go in front of the dining room, where the dining room is now. Yeah, yeah. And it will, in my opinion, it will be very odd to even get out of the dining room and go to a laundry room, bathroom. So it should stay the same place as it is and <clears throat> keep the design that we have because you'll have a better flow. You're not covering the bedrooms. If you take it back, it's going to cover the bedroom and the bedroom windows will have less lighting. Um, and I think it should stay where it is designed and not back. Okay. Great. Thank you. So you have the flat roof area in the middle, right, as it exists Basically right now? what it is, it's two roofs and then two in the middle. And so it's 1 to 12 right now? Uh, That's what it shows on the drawing. Basically, we're keeping the same pitch, I think, as it okay. is, have extending you, it longer. Have you had any problems with uh, anything like that? Since not, we, my father bought the house in 87, haven't had any leaks. Is it asphalt shingle? Or is yeah. The only thing we had was old roof, and a couple of years ago, we replaced, put a new roof, but it was just because it's old and we didn't want to have any leaks, but uh, before we didn't have a leak, no problems. Okay. Hey, I noticed on the older plan, it says 312. Up there it says 112. <laughs> Maybe they fixed it since then. <laughs> or or you know, they changed one side. Oh, you're right. I wasn't it's just the guy who it and he couldn't make it. But basically. Uh, oh, right. You probably, to go all the way out. He probably changed the pitch. So Yeah, right. 312 would end up like six feet off the ground or something. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying there's a ridge here and then this slopes that way? Correct. And that's so, so it's so flat that you can't see it. Well, it's actually not that but it's 3 to 12 on one this side? This is 1 and 12. That's so why I guess 1 to 12 on one side, 3 to 12 on the other. Wow, that's really strange. Well, is that the problem when you add that additional space on? You're going to have, you know... We have to change the pitch probably to... But that means he's got to rebuild that whole piece of roof to... So basically, he just went like this to it. <laughs> basically like uh, this, and we have to change right. one of them. Right. Okay. That's strange. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't have any other cards, so I'm going to close the public session. And uh, let's see. Like um, yeah, I'll, uh, it, it was a little confusing on the plans, um, but I, I, you know, I've been out and visited the site. And, uh, the neighbors don't seem to be having any concern. I mean, you know, it's not impacting the house to the north. Um, you know, I, I defer a little bit to see what you guys have to say, but I, I can support it as, as it looks. Okay. I'm not crazy about vinyl windows, but they are all the way around, you know. Okay. Next. 
Um, I don't really have too much of a problem on where it's located towards the front. Uh, there is a fence there that's covering part of it, and um, it does make sense. You don't want to block off that extra window from the third bedroom. Um, the only thing when I saw it, it was a very strange roof line to it, and it took me a little while to get a sense for it. And I mean, it's too bad that the new addition is sort of mimicking the bad portion of the existing. But I mean, I guess it's not doing anything worse than it is now on that corner. Um, I mean, it, it is a pretty small, modest addition to it. So I guess for what it is, I'm okay with it. Um, okay. Um. Yeah, I, I think it is fairly modest for the applicant. I, you know, it's unfortunate that you have windows there that are vinyl, which you're trying to match, so now you have more vinyl windows that don't, don't really look that appealing. But as we said, as the other board members have mentioned, there's not, you're not really doing an extravagant addition. So I'd say that I would support it. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't have any cross discussion. Yes, is there a motion? Anyone? In? Anybody wants to I'll, uh, I'll move to accept, uh, where are we at here, PDR 2007-157A, 1242 Winchester, uh, approved for, with no conditions. Uh, unless you guys have anything. I don't have anything. Uh, no conditions. Okay. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Ellis and a second by Mr. Yu to approve with, um, pre as presented, without the staff condition. Yeah. yeah, I think we're okay with that. Okay. And um, we have drafted a record of decision. Uh, would you like us to simply modify that record of decision to correspond with no conditions? Yes. Um, we can read it for you if you like, or we can move on to the next item. I think we're aware of Let's it. Let's move on. Very good. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Okay, this will be roll call. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Yu? Yes. And Mr. Alano? Yes. Motion carries 3 nothing. Thank you. Okay. W. Chair members of the Design Review Board, the next case item before you is case number 1-PDR-2007-133-A, located at 1953 Bellevue Drive. This case was continued um, from February 7th due to noticing issues. Uh, the project is to add a new 938 square foot second story addition to an existing 1,378 square foot single family home. The house was originally constructed in 1930. The lot size is approximately 7,450 square feet. The total new proposed habitable floor area will be 2,247 square feet. If I may address some of the drawings that the applicant has provided. Here we have the site plan, the proposed first floor plan, second floor plan, elevations of all, all sides, roof plan, and perspective. Um, a part of this project is, is conditioned to having a removal of this particular wall to meet the required setback. They are actually at, currently at four feet. They will remove um, a foot off of this so that they, not, they eliminated a variance right off the bat by doing that. They will shave off that. Um, there are no oak, bay, or sycamore trees on this site, and this project is exempt from sequel review. I may go over staff comments. Okay, in regards to site planning, the overall location of the addition, driveway, garage, and landscape design appears to be appro appropriate to the project site. Overall, these elements are not significantly changed th the neighborhood context. With respect to mass and scale, the massing includes, including the second floor is characterized by setback, articulation, and the front facade. 
and the modest roof pitch in which the building is appropriate to the site and the surrounding neighborhood. Lastly, in respect to architectural style and, and materials and detail, the, architect, the architecture is consistent with the Tuscan style, and the building appears well designed and appropriate for the neighborhood. However, staff recommends a reduction in the number of materials to help soften the overall appearance of the design. Staff recommends approval of the project with the following conditions. Uh, condition number one, reduce the amount of stone used within the front elevation. Condition number two, modify the west elevation to reduce the, ma reduce the massive appearance. That would be um, this particular elevation right here. And comment number three, use fiberglass windows or, an alternate, or another alternative other than vinyl. Um, we also condition that all muttons shall be three-dimensional from the exterior, so true divided light. That was number two. Um, number two was to modify the west elevation, reduce the mass of on this particular elevation. Um, staff has worked with the applicant, uh, basically um, addressing certain issues. So this is a revised applicant has. So you're this recommending minimizing the kind of materials in that elevation. Windows from vinyl to fiberglass. There was a fourth one. What was that? Oh, that that was actually it was with respect to the windows that they be true divided light. Yes. Okay. That's a good comment. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. If there are there any questions from the board? Uh, they, uh, I noticed it, it says uh, off-white color vinyl clad doors and windows. Yes, that, that's what they're proposing. That's what they're proposing. Windows don't match the. Those have changed. Drawings have changed since. Yes, the, these elevations have changed. They're different. Yeah. Uh, I can you know this. Elevations were the only thing effective. I believe there will be a slight change in the wind. Yes. Yeah, windows are moving around. Windows are moving around. Shown in that bedroom one. I think there, there's also there should have been a window here to on that second balcony. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. The windows there. Inconsistencies. These at all. So. Yeah. These would be the elevations that the board will determine. Um, it doesn't look like yeah. that. That's what. Yes. That's this, what this, this is what we're basing right. on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We have a lot of cars in this one. I have a car from the designer. Oh, one more. One more from the owner. Okay, so I have an owner and designer. Does the designer want to come first? Mr. Akokin? Thank you. Good evening, honorable members of the board, uh, Mr. Chair. My name is Gary Akopian, and um, I'm a designer of the project uh, in my office located in Glendale, 65 West Colorado, Colorado Street. And uh, I also reside in Glendale. So it's very important for me to see Glendale more beautiful day by day. Um, uh, well, first, I'd I like to uh, express my, I mean, my client's disappointment so, of the uh, the way how this project was handled, uh, we waited about a year to to get first uh, for the first meeting. But at the same time, I'm, I'm very glad that uh, staff uh, worked with me on a on a design solutions, and I, I appreciate their support and efforts. Um, I like to. Go walk through the project if you let me. Uh, okay, I please. think we have a. We have a. There's a point. It's on the right there. It could be concise. Oh, I just uh, would like to go through the, through the uh, comments that I have uh, from the staff, and then I explain. Uh, I, I basically, well, um, we got with the. Major issue that I've seen uh, this elevation 
uh, and a mass of, of it I created. Um, I could point one issue that we basically have in um, a wall six foot high on this uh, side of the uh, of building. So it's going to be visi visible only top part of this building since that six foot high is very close to the building. It's a fence wall five feet away from the uh, uh, from the building itself. Uh, so in that perspective, so we won't see the whole mass. We're going to see even one third of the mass going to go. Um, and um, also uh, about the fraud elevation, um, this um, stone uh, running through the whole entire uh, four sides of the building. So I, I, I wanted to be consistent and uh, I like to tie up all this uh, elevation together by doing the stone uh, columns and incorporating into entire design. That's, to me it's very important. As, as far as the uh, openings and fenestrations concerned, um, we're willing to uh, Except that idea of having, a, instead of cloud, having that uh, uh, fiber, fiberglass, 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 which is uh, much more uh, humanly touchy, and and it's uh, it could work. Really it looks good. look yeah. like a yeah. wood. So we agree with that. Now about design, <laughs> it's all about uh, Trinity. There's three three. Three sides covered with the patios. You, you could uh, see all the three balconies that we have, but those balconies they're facing uh, not to the neighbors, but uh, to the front and to the back of the front. So we, we won't have any uh, uh, impact with the neighbors. Uh, I maximum reduce the windows facing the neighbor side uh, to is that uh, privacy of the neighbors too. Uh, lots of open spaces, I mean covered spaces, which is so, uh, uh, love and, uh, I mean it's uh, California and also this way we utilize in a side, especially the side yard, we utilize them the whole entire yard by doing that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a plus, big plus. Uh, balconies, uh, again, I love balconies since uh, they provide in some space, uh, which, uh, buffer space between this interior and uh, outdoor, so people could uh, actually communicate even if they standing there and see who's passing by, say hi, wave someone, yeah, have that contact with neighbors. Um, as far as plans, uh, I just uh, create three major spaces actually. Uh, this is be bedroom becomes a living room, I mean a family room uh, with, the, with its own patio. There's a meat, meat space which, which has a kitchen with its own patio. And a uh, uh, front space which is living and dining uh, together and with a porch on the front. So basically the, the entire building divided into three. <coughs> That Trinity goes through all the uh, entire project. We have three, three, three there, three here on a plants and elevations and, uh, uh, and uh, the way the space uh, broke, broke up. Um, another issue is a garage. We probably uh, revisit this and, uh, and make it more compatible with the new project that we have. There's a side, siding on the garage, so we'll probably change it, put, a spot in, put some spots of the same stone so that uh, connect to the uh, proposed building. Um, yeah, we, we, we uh, got rid of that one foot, actually, uh, on a side. It's the reducing the uh, width of the building, although instead we extended it to the back. Actually, the footprint of the first floor it won't change uh, enough. It won't change a lot. It's just that trimmed area on the on the side of the. What's the ceiling height on the existing? 
It's eight foot and a little more. A uh, full eight foot spell. Uh, if you could start wrapping it up here, I think your time is. So, well, it's okay. Okay, so that's it. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, two different kinds of stones are, are showing. The, there's a kind of a submorph, you know, single the, in these, and now there's one that's got a lot of variation. Is that what you're interested in using? You know, what, or is there a sample in that? Did I do miss Do you have it? any samples? So I do. Yeah, that would be the material board. Material board, there is. Actually, I was is going it? for for the more regular, regular size, regular uh, shape uh, stones. Uh huh. And a uh, little weathered. Uh, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is, is it that is ver a, variation? A, that's what you're interested in. Okay. Yeah, and the I think color you like of to look the, for one. the plastic. Do you have it? They do have it. He's is bringing it. it to okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, The owner, um, Mobik uh, Hashon. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. Hey, good evening. Could you say your name? My again? name is Mobik Pashkan. Oh, I'm nice. owner of the 1953 Bellevue Drive. Do you mind speaking, uh, raising the microphone up, please? Thank you. Okay, uh, the house being purchased in 2002 uh, with the meaning of redoing the house because it actually is built in 1926 and there are no any major renovation or major changes being done on the house. But things are, you know, like a kind of delay, and uh, finally we are here today to... Uh, we hired basically the, the good architect. We've done a lot of projects in the city of Glendale. And uh, in terms of the, the codes and uh, the zoning requirements, I believe we are not uh, violating any zone or the code requirements by the city of Glendale. And uh, in the meantime, making the house better is going to be uh, like for all neighborhood. So this pretty much it. What I want to tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alina Kirakosian. My name is Alina Kirikosian, and I'm residing at 1941 Bellevue Drive. Um, I'm here on behalf of my parents and I. Two years ago, we went through the same process with the city. We were one of the first houses on the block to have our entire house demolished and rebuilt. And um, I can honestly say that we have had so many compliments from people walking by, from neighbors who first opposed the, um, the process of our house being built, to now. Um, I 100% agree with the house that the patients are trying to build. Um, you're going to hear the same complaints of the neighbor of how it's so big, it's, it doesn't go with the atmosphere of the block, but um, in reality when you look at it, our property has made the block much nicer in the, in the way that people look at it. And um, if, it, if it complies with the, uh, with the zoning and if the codes are correct, I say, whose business is it, except for the cities, to say if, they ha if their house should be built or not. And um, that's basically it. How Thank many you. houses down? From there? I'm probably two, two, two houses down. South or north? Or uh, 1941. 1941. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next speaker is another neighbor, Geraldine Schneider. Thank you. I'm Geraldine Schneider, 1949 Bellevue Drive, next door neighbor to the uh, property we're talking about. I have a uh, copy of the blueprint from our computer, which is a little difficult for me to see due to the fact that it's so small, but I have some, th some things that concern me. I'd like to have a little help. Number one, um, there's no question about having two-story houses. We welcome them. There's no problem. 
I'm just concerned over the mass of the front appearance of the property, whereas the lady from 1941 has a beautiful home, and the second story was set back, and it really is quite lovely. This one will be equally as beautiful, I'm sure, but I, I am concerned that it's all top-heavy front and wonder why it couldn't be set back second story only. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it should be something like 20 feet. It doesn't have to be, but theirs is just like six feet, and I would like to question that. Um, the second and only other question I have, as I say, I'm sure it's going to be a gorgeous house. Not beautiful, just gorgeous. I have photos uh, of my, pro my driveway, which abuts their property on the east side. Uh, it says here in, in, from my computer printout, the existing two-car garage will remain in the same location. Is that to say that there will be no change of, yeah, there will be no change, but I have a question there if I may be so, I have some photos that might help you if I may give this to you. I thought this would be a help to you. Thank you. That kind of shows it to you in reality what it is. Oh, I see, that's the garage. Yeah. yeah. Now my question... Uh, Ma'am, you need to speak oh, at this microphone. Okay. okay. My question is, there's one part of the blueprint that m maybe I, I don't read it right, which could be, and I hope <coughs> that's the case, because I'm happy about everything here. It shows uh, the on my driveway where it says a two-car garage, it shows the blueprint drawn with an extension, uh, if those are the proper words, yet it shows my property line, which I have a survey showing that. Now that section would be where that planter is, if you will take note. See in the here? photo where the planter is? Right. Okay. Uh, am I misinterpreting? I need your help. Am I misinterpreting that they're not going to extend that? No, it's remaining as it's remaining, is. Yeah. Pardon? It's remaining as is. Okay, they're not going to touch that. That so doesn't look like I it. I don't no. understand the drawing showing that extension coming out. Do you understand what I'm? Oh, right. The radius right. Line. The no. right now is here. Yeah. And there, there's no, there's nothing showing that they're doing anything to that. So, because uh, I've seen blueprints before, but not where it shows an extension coming out. If there's not going to be anything done there. No, that doesn't appear to be. It looks like they're doing nothing to this side of the garage. Well, I had to be sure. You say it looks like, so I thought it looks like. But it's too late if it just looks like. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and furthermore, if you'll notice from my photos there, uh, see there's a, um, a, a fence that separates our homes from my driveway. Right. Where they uh, put a fence up, which is their privilege, and I'm happy about that. But I believe there is a six-foot uh, limit for that fence, and yet they have extensions that they have not removed. I am questioning, are they intending yes. to build it up? Because really that would close my whole property in on my driveway. See my point? Right. I, well, we can ask them. Okay. Thank you. I think your time is up. Is there anything else that you would like to Pardon? add? Pardon? Your time is up. Is uh, there anything else that you would like to add before? Okay. May I have my photos, or would you like, you may keep them. Can we them hold on to them to. until we finish? You want to keep them? Okay. I think those. Thank you. Those would be exhibits exactly. that we'll have to keep. Once, once they're submitted, they become part of the public record, so thank you. I was going to ask her a question, but I guess she's, Did you, she's too late. Did you ask her? No, that? it's okay. okay. All right. One more speaker. Alba Wiseman. Thank you the board. My name is Alba Wiseman. I live in 1933 Bellevue Drive. First of all, I want the family to have a very nice house. 
I'm concerned about this project, and I want to present these points. Very important, the second floor in the front of the house on the right does not have enough setback, like Jerry said, to minimize the appearance of two-store house in a predominant one-story <coughs> neighborhood. It's about six feet because the balcony is almost in the front. There is the home three houses, the way the, what the lady was talking about, the way built not long ago, and the setback of the second story is much larger. And that was, I, I remember, Mr. Aliano can remember that we were here a few times. And <clears throat> so, and the balcony that in that house in the front is not accepted because it doesn't, it really changes the neighborhood a lot. This project has a balcony in the front and two more balconies in the back. One is 12 by 16 feet. The other one is 4 by 13. Mr. Aliano said very clear, I quote, a two-story home on a street that is mainly one-store homes is difficult to do. He was right, but it can be done. A lot of road angling, not pro uh, proper for the neighborhood. The amount of stone used in the front makes the house more massive, and if you drive by the street, the house is beautiful, no question about it, can be beautiful, but it doesn't go with the neighborhood. To blend better in this traditional neighborhood, changes should be made. With a proper second store setback, no balcony in the front, less stone, and also less wrought iron, accomplish much more in the neighborhood. Hopefully you take this point into consideration. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kogan, you have a rebuttal time? Correct. There's a two-minute rebuttal. And if you could address uh, the fence uh, along the driveway, the post that is sticking up. Post? Uh, that's one of the main no things. Uh, well, these, these posts are kind of above the uh, six-foot height. Oh, yeah. And forgive you me, mind you're going to have to speak uh, into the microphone. Uh, yeah, we, we, we'll, we agree that those posts are, look um, awkward, so we probably uh, revisit that side of the property and uh, yeah, make, make, you know. Use a skill saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, since, since we haven't started to do uh, the entire uh, construction yet, so, uh, but at the time, it won't be appropriate with the building, uh, right. uh, I'm sure. Okay. Well, as long as um, we should probably make sure that that's part of that's the record right. that you are going to. It, you're demoing the existing building, right? You're demoing? No. No, no you're not. not absolutely. Just the whole side. Just that one side. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're slashing that side. So to meet, uh, we, we don't want to go to the whole hassle of uh, variance and we're slashing that side to meet uh, zoning requirement. Right. Uh, okay. As far as the front concern, I don't see any issue there. It has been built properly, nicely on uh, all sides. And. Uh, uh, in that eclectic, eclectic environment of the neighborhood, uh, I, don't, I can't average a style that I could use there. I, I, I'm free to use any style I choose or my client choose. Are you familiar with the 1941 house that, that she was talking about? The new two-story that's there? Yeah, I've seen that. How, what would you estimate is the setback? On a construction stage. What would you estimate is the setback of the second story on that one? It was too far. Oh, I said 20 feet, 40 feet, how much I is mean, too there far? There's no numbers. Uh, I, 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 I'm just asking you if you could estimate from what you saw that you would, about you could you could choose not to answer if you don't want to. No, 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 I'm, I'm just uh, cooperating here. You know, well, I believe it's uh, 15. 15 probably. feet, okay. 10, 15. 15. From the front of the house? Yeah. So from here to here, basically. But yeah. there is no s number uh, that we follow. It's just uh, uh, only no, you're impression, absolutely right. impression it's of the... Uh, right. And it's, it's probably... Uh, and one more point. Uh, the street level is much lower than the, than the first floor uh, footprint. That's taken consideration. So it's going... Uh, 
So that makes it even the, worse then. The <laughs> so it makes it, no, it makes less. It makes less, less uh, visible the to top part. All right, bigger. <laughs> yeah, or bigger. Oh, it looks smaller, <laughs> second floor. <clears throat> okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. So I will close the public session. I have no other, no other cards. Did I leave anybody out? It's not. Okay. Would you like to start? Sure. Um, looking at your, the renderings of the elevations, I actually I like the design of it. I think you did a really good job of pushing the masses and you know providing enough detail. Um, it's got a very nice character as it wraps around the house, um, except for that one glaring elevation, which I think you, you realize. Um, is there such? I mean, this elevation is very nice here. You got all these different, you know, elevations going back. You're using them to to use the stone, not to use the stone, and, and they're very well separated. And so, I'd like to see a lot more of that on this elevation. And I know that it's to maximize whatever setback you're bringing it in, and you're taking it straight up. But you know, even if you varied it by six inches or whatever, just to give it enough depth to kind of play around with that. I think it would make a very big difference here. Um, yeah, I'm a little worried about the setback. It's, I was looking at the drawings and I thought it was nine, but it's nine to here between this and this. But between the face of this and this, it, it's about six, six and a half feet. And so that, that kind of worries me a little bit. It'll look a little massive on that front side. Um, I'm not too crazy about that. Such a large patio balcony in the back. Um, maybe you know, we could talk about that. Uh, but all in all, I have a. I think you did a very good job in designing the project. I think there's just a couple of things that we could talk about. Um, so, to hear what you guys think. Yeah, thank you. You're next. Okay, um, I would agree with Mr. Aliano about the fence, and uh, I'm glad the applicant has decided how what to do with that. Um, I uh, I find it. I, I think maybe it's the mixture of materials to be pretty busy on the front. I mean, I, the massing is a little bit of an issue. I think I would uh, concur with you, Mr. Yu. Um, but personally, and you know what, I, I'm not going to tell the applicant what they want to pick. But I'll tell you the the stone here and the plans that we got at home is a lot easier to deal with than than this particular pattern that's shown here. Now it doesn't appear to be so bad on the picture, but it's uh, to me. There's a little bit too much stone, so I I, I don't know quite you know what the solution to that would be. Um, the, uh, the materials used around the windows, I think it was all precast stone or concrete. Am, am I correct in that? I, I'm sorry, to, it, it's precast. It's not styrofoam. The fenestration. Yeah, for actually, it says it ornamental wooden trims. Armel wood trim. Painted per Dun Edwards Rosewood. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry, we're going to oh, have to yeah, reopen, reopen, I, I, I the <laughs> reopen the hearing and re request that the applicant come back to the podium in order to answer Mr. the question. Mr. Chair, I'm Does sorry. specifically to say it, that it's Well, I would say right now uh, if it's You, it's might, you might want to reopen the yeah. hearing and answer the, have the applicant answer that question. Right. Maybe it's the fascia board. My bad. Yeah, I mean, there's that. There's this. There's a lot of these little details. That's what so I thought. So you were concerned about why? Why is that, was that a concern? It, it's just, I, you know, it, it works as long as it's not the styrofoam stuck oh, it I over. See, I see. But there's no note. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's, I was looking for the note. Well, I didn't maybe, see one. You, uh, let me reopen. Okay. This. Sorry, Sorry to be a problem, you child. Know, and typically, we. Typically, that's something that we would catch on the staff report. So sorry about that. Okay. All right. Who's coming up? Sorry to drag you back up here again. Would you, would you mind? Uh, the you, you Sorry, Mr. Coby, you have to speak into the microphone. Oh, yeah. Is this wood? Yes. Or imitation, yes. And this is, and this is the same. Roof tiles, uh, uh, roof uh, tails and, uh, uh -huh. and all this. The fascia. Uh, and the lintels, they are the same material. So or, is that like an actual header that gets... Uh, no, actually, it's just it's a, but attachment. it's out of plane from the circle. <coughs> yeah, it's not a recess. No. But but what I'm gonna, I'm going to try to do is wrap around the corner. So on the top. 
So you won't you won't tell that it's a it's a attachment. attachment. Yeah, it's core. Okay. Excuse me, I don't think the audience could hear. What was the material used for those it's details? Wood. Wood, uh, Painted plant wood. On, plant on. But right. Pa okay. This is this is yeah. This is CDI. I, I call it. You got to call it. Yeah. Okay. CDI. Uh, I, con con concrete. Concrete or, or some or kind of lightweight. Lightweight. Lightweight concrete. Yeah, not not the styrofoam that's covered well, and stuccoed over. Right. Is it okay. lightweight concrete or wood or or a combination of both? Well, both. Well, both. Both. Well, There's two different. Well, okay. This this is different. This rock is different. It's a concrete. I mean, lightweight concrete. And this is wood, which complements to the wood hills. I mean, uh, that uh, roof hills. The rafters. Rafters. Right. Okay. I'll treat. And so, just so there's no confusion, perha perhaps the board might consider uh, to include in the conditions, you know, what's what if it's not clearly noted on, on the drawings and that there should be no foam details used in the project. It's better to just suggest the condition, and that way, when we're reviewing while the project is under construction, we understand clearly what was approved. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, you would have to close the public. Yes. We, yes. Uh, let me. your hammer. Is closed. Thank you. Okay. Um, it kind of go back and continue. And I don't know what a solution would be, but I, it does look pretty heavy in the front. Um, I would also, uh, uh, and I guess maybe it's a, it's a combination of the use of materials and that, that upper upper balcony, but I don't quite know what the solution to that would be based on the interior floor use, you know, the, with their foyer and things. Um, I'll defer any other comments at the moment. I think. Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm next. You're next. Thank you. I'm just trying to understand some of these planes. I think that it looks heavier than on these because they changed the roof color too to match the stone color. Is that what's changed? Well, on this one, it's they used the beige color. Oh, right. right. So it does look more massive on it. Typically, when there are discrepancies between the mm -hmm. colored elevations and the material board, staff tends to draw the attention to the to the color material board as right. opposed. Yeah, I would say. So I think that they're would calling be out the red one. Yeah, right. or the brownish red. Okay. Yes, I, I have to agree with a lot of the comments. I think uh, Mr. Copian have done a very nice job, especially with the way the whole project is put together. Um, and I, I'm trying to sort of pull back and see. Um, so I think staff also made some very good comments in terms of. Uh, for one thing, I agree with all the comments, the four comments that were listed uh, in terms of trying to figure out a way to reduce some of the materials, the window comment, the muttons, um, and uh, there was a f uh, third one which I can't recall. The muttons shall be three dimensional. Oh, the elevation. And fiberglass. Right. right. Yeah. And the elevation comments on the elevation. Um, I think if you can, I mean, I think that's kind of the focus of our comments you know, that we sort of brought up, uh, the group has brought up, and I will probably bring up as well, is, um, is that I think, you know, in this type of project, given um, some of the older buildings in the area, and you're right, I mean, there really isn't one particular style, but they're all fairly old uh, buildings. And they all have this sort of nice 20s and 30s charm. Um, this building is actually going to transform that a little bit because, as you stated, it's kind of a Tuscan style, but it's a modernized Tuscan style. And I, I think uh, from that perspective, I have difficulty with it because um, it, it doesn't feel right, you know, there. I think, though, you could make it feel right if you take some of those comments the staff mentioned, especially with respect to materials, because the details are there. I mean, there really isn't that much, uh, you know, you really start thinking Tuscan, 
When you look at these kinds of things, you know, very kind of rustic looking columns uh, with, with uh, balconies and things like that, or roofscapes, you know, this sort of, this sort of thing I think has a very nice Tuscan feel. And the stone itself, you know, even that theory, I suppose you could, but it's really more of a, it's quite Californian the way it's designed. It has a very much uh, mission and, and, and uh, Spanish revival type of language in here. So it's not truly uh, Tuscan. Uh, it's really more in that language, which you find a lot of these buildings in that area, you know, not this one, but the sort of, Bible, the Spanish uh, Bible. Um, so I, you know, I, I would probably have a look at that and and see how you can simplify some things to make the building less less overpowering. Because it is a very nice building, and nobody can doubt that. I think it's very nicely designed. I think the main comments that I've heard from the group and also from for the board members and the staff and the neighbors is that. Uh, it needs to also start feel good in the neighborhood. It's not just about making a beautiful building. It's about making it feel right in the area. Um, so I would really, really look at that. I mean, I think you could, you could try a scheme where you might, you know, you, you might remove the stone from here and see what would happen, or you might remove the stone from there. Actually, that's not as visible, but uh, right here, because in your rendering, actually, your sketch. You're not showing stone up there, and that's actually quite interesting. It makes the top a little bit less light, little light. feeling. Mm -hmm. So it's worth looking at that because it's, it's going to have an impact, and I think you have gone so far, and it's such a nice project that I think it might be worth just another little push just to make it just right. Um, uh, what else can I say? I think, uh, having said that, I think I want to focus on some of the details. I think this concept of the header being out of wood is very nice. Again, it's a mission sort of detail. You see that. You just have to go to San Fernando Mission and you'll see that everywhere. And when you study that, you'll see that the headers are never planted on. They're always slightly recessed because they're structural members. They're not just a decorative piece. It's actually the header that supports, you know, all that portion of the wall above the window. So, uh, you know, in this case, it's kind of false. It's, you know, it's not trying to be structural. Uh, but you can fix that if you can figure out a way to push it in, and um, um, you know maybe it could be, um, you know the way uh, I don't know how you're sheeting the building. But there are tricks that you can use to just give it a slight coplanar feel, and you can do your your plaster around it with a slight bull nose so that again it gets a little bit more depth. Uh, you may, you may look at it and maybe feel that it might not be necessary because there are uh, there are a lot of things going on. You have wrought iron, you have wood. Uh, usually when you see these kind of rustic things, and that's what's so interesting about the Tuscan style, is that it's very, the one that I'm thinking of, it's a very rustic approach to design. It's not refined. Uh, we're not talking about Renaissance architecture. We're talking about farmhouses. That's what people associate with Tuscan style. These very kind of simple, elegant, but very um, rustic, not sophisticated. And so when you start putting a header right like that, to me that suggests rustic. It's not refined. But then you look around the building and you see really nice ironwork, wrought iron, very nicely detailed. You see capitals and things like that. And you have to make a decision. Either go refined or you go rustic. And I think both could work. You just gotta, I just don't think you should mix the two. Uh, and I will definitely look at this elevation to see if there's a way to minimize this division because there's not enough flow here. You know, I wonder whether there's something that could happen at this corner. As you said, most of it will be covered anyways. If there's a way to kind of accentuate that corner, which will be, uh, which will be, I guess, this corner here. There's something that could happen there, but perhaps maybe it's okay. I mean, I, uh, I, I think my main concern is this division, how you hang all that. Uh, it almost this piece looks like it's just planted on, and maybe you want to study one where there's nothing. Maybe this is plaster, plaster, and you just have columns that are basically the rustic portion of it. That would be worthwhile, I think, to look at. I don't think we're not really asking you to redesign the plan or the, or the massing. I think the concern of the community is the setback, but I, I have an opinion about that, which is that I think you've done a good job in, in that because this is actually a balcony. It's not plane of the building. 
But I think when you look through that, you're going to be looking through a void and not necessarily a surface. But it might be enough. I think, um, you know, if you want to look at that again, uh, you know, it's up to you. But I, I'm not sure that you need to. I think if you pull it back more, <clears throat> I don't know that you'll get this kind of interesting um, arrangement. Um, you might get, might not be as interesting. You know, right now you have things that actually don't even align. You know, this plane and that. But by pulling it back, if you pull it back, obviously it minimizes or compromises your bedroom upstairs. So probably you can't make it that much smaller. Because the house is fairly tight. I mean, I don't think this is an extravagant project. Um, but for me, I think uh, in terms of the language, if you can clarify some things and, and uh, refine or take things away and see how it works, uh, is really the, the approach because I think you're there. It's just you got to get this building to feel right in that neighborhood, and uh, because most of the work there is you know twenties and thirties, nice big pitch roofs. Some of them have Spanish details, some of them don't. Some of them have brick, some of them don't have brick. So there's a nice collage, or not, you can make a nice collage, but sensitively uh, with this project uh, without going overboard. So. So I would support this project, but I think I would like to see it one more time with these comments being responded to. Thank you. What do you guys think of the, the large balcony in the back? It just seems really big. It, it, it is pretty big. You know, I can understand maybe having that downstairs. Issue, the, right? you know. Well, it is in the backyard. What if, because it seems like all of the balconies are sort of Treated with sort of this roof. What if they did that something similar, reduced it by reduced half? Reduced that, yeah. Oh, I and, see what you're saying. This roof sort of material also gets continued here to kind of balance. You'll put a roof there over there. Just the sides. Yeah, to well, reduce the balcony, so basically pitch it back. Oh, I see what you mean. Right, right. A little bit, yeah. Because um, I mean, it, it is a really nice porch, you know. But, um, well, I think yeah, underneath it would be used very well. I just I don't know if you need such a large balcony. Especially since it's overlooking your neighbor right there next to you. Right. Mm. Yeah, I could easily, you know, so see him. Well, you could look at that. I mean, you're saying maybe being a good. Well, I mean, they could keep the lower portion. I was just thinking the top. Right. <coughs> okay, putting so the creating a. They could study that. I mean, that's a kind of a, a design thing that. They, there's something really nice about this plan. That I think it's very attractive the way you, you treated all these. Surfaces, you know, it has this really nice mm -hmm. courtyard feel and you know, patios and things like that. So I, I'm sure it's going to be a really nice project. Um, so I, anything else? Are we leaning towards bringing it back, or well, for me, I think it would be nice to see it one more time just to get these refinements. Um, just to interject, if the board would consider, since the, and we would read back the, obviously, the conditions and comments, um, but since many of those are very similar to staff's suggestions, we have a high comfort level in being able to administer this one if, okay. if the board so chooses. I think I'll be okay with that. You want to take that on? All right. I'm okay with that. I think that's got fine. some spare time now. That well, that's sort of our day job. Ah, yeah, I see you every other Thursday. <laughs> All right. So, so we're approving with comments and with conditions. With that, perhaps we should re read back the comments to make sure that sure we. Do we have a? Okay. Let's see if there's a motion. Yeah. First. Well, um, I could support her comment. Okay. I'll make the. I'll ma you make I'll the motion. Okay. Make a motion to approve. The project with the uh, conditions that are going to be read, and uh, leave it at that. Great. Okay. Um, high quality materials should be utilized, as noted on the drawings, uh, for all the trim materials. They should be either lightweight concrete or painted wood, not foam. Um, there is a, we've heard from a few of the board members, a concern about the west elevation. There were some recommendations about potential for making the materials all in plaster, consideration to be given to articulating the second floor uh, 
but there was a seeming consensus that the ground floor being all at the same plane was probably okay. Uh, we heard that the overall configuration of the the massing and the plans uh, are sufficient and that the setback uh, is sufficient. There isn't a request for additional setback, but an overall concern about the consistent use of material and detail in the uh, style approach, that there should be a clear choice made between a rustic type Tuscan style, which would have a level of simplicity, or a more refined style. Right now there is uh, some uh, mixing and hybridizing of styles. Um, so, and there is a concern uh, about the rear balcony, the overall appearance of that, and a recommendation that it be reviewed to be treated like the other balconies on the front, which have the balcony rather embedded within a sloped roof form, which would minimize the balcony on the second floor and maintain the size of the patio on the ground floor. Does that seem to, to cover to it? Reduce the balcony size. And also reduce the balcony size, but on that on, on just the upper level. But the, the amount of floor area that's covered by the balcony is is okay. Does that does that Did seem you to cover the header? The, the header, the, the header um, is fine in the material, the chosen material would, but it does need to be recessed. It should not be planted on. Um, there are a few additional conditions that staff provided that weren't mentioned, but the, um, the applicant seems to have agreed to not using vinyl windows, but to the use of fiberglass windows. Paintable fiberglass? Okay. Paintable fiberglass windows. There, there was some comment earlier all about the fence. Yes, um, I didn't quite catch that. Are you so. Sure so that there should be a removal of those posts at the at the top of the existing fence because it wouldn't be consistent with the proposed style. And is there a sense that they could be replaced with anything else or simply removed and have uh, what's currently uh, portions of uh, white wood, um, maybe it's a picket fence, on top of uh, the block? Is that okay without the extension of the posts? They'll probably just cut it and put a cap on it. Okay, so it's just the post extensions that there's a concern about, and there seemed to be agreement from the applicant on that, so we'll add that as a condition. Very good. May I, um, if, if the board agrees, there's one thing that we haven't really discussed is the garage. In the garage right now, it appears that um, it stays as is, but the style of the garage is different. If uh, if you wouldn't mind taking a look at that during your review, I think you know, if you, even if you look at those photographs, you'll see that the style of the garage is quite different. I think they should address that. So would that be a uh, consideration uh, or a condition? I think it should be a condition. condition. Okay, a, a condition garage. that the garage um, be... Which needs to be brought the, into. And uh, w primarily we're talking about the uh, finishes and details, not changing the form right. of the garage roof. And, uh, or the roof as well. I mean, if the, because it's a tower roof, the garage does not have a tower roof. I think also the form of the garage is a, ga a steep gable. Um, would we be conditioning that that st roof structure be removed and revised so that it works? Can I ask, since we're discussing this, can I ask you to retract your motion for a little bit and discuss, is that okay? This is a lot of stuff that we haven't kind of missed. Um, how do you feel about that? I, I mean, I'd like to see it being done together, but I, I don't know if we... I mean, what if, part of the project. What if, I mean, what if they don't have the money to work on the garage? What is, 
I don't know. Can they bring it? Yeah, but normally it's a separate project, or yeah, but normally you because it's a whole new garage. If you start start changing the roof on it, right. especially to be the structurally to be able to hold up, you know, the roof tiles, they're gonna have to do some site or some structural work to it too. Well, that's a problem, I think, uh, because it's a shame that you would not consider the garage as part of the site, you know. Okay, ask him to see if they could do it as okay. part of it, and then if he says yes, then it's solved. All right, let me reopen this, the public session. Mr. Akovia, could you address that? Third time's a term. Hmm? Third time's will be a term. Uh, seems to me we could face... Uh, uh, zoning issues if we've touched the garage uh, more than 50 percent. So then mm. we might uh, push garage from set it back from the property line. It, it might be some issues. I don't think so. Yeah, what would that be the case? No. You're not making it, you're not adding uh, stalls. And we, we, actually, we, we, we're willing to um, resurface uh, garage walls, uh, put the stock line, put, put some details on it uh, uh, in, uh, cons consistent with the uh, with main Thanks. house, but uh, the main structural changes, I, I might move. Basically. Yeah, but the roof is much steeper. Actually, there would be an issue because the garage size itself on the interior is substandard. It does not have the required 20 by 20 so interior. Demo it. Well, so um, actually, Mr. Kobian is correct that once you once you remove more than 50% of the exterior walls and roof in this case, because it is substandard, you would have to bring it up to code, which would be a 20 by 20 interior garage. Then we're facing a big problem since it's coming very close to the built okay. house. Well, um, is that the least we could ask? Class, right? Yeah, at least you could, yeah, you could do something, well, because right now it's all weeping motors. Oh, definitely. We, we, oh, yeah, we're planning to do that. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. If it yeah, if you can at least possible. resurface and, and, and kind put, of put some details. For the color, you know, try to match sure. so that it doesn't look so foreign to the whole project. Yes, yes, definitely. I'm not sure, I don't know, that we need to ask to replaster because, in a way, it's kind of nice that if you're not going to do it, just to, it to leave it and yeah. clean it up, and <laughs> it looks just another, like a little. Uh, we we might do color it, paint it to the color that. Uh, uh, you could uh, do that. You could try to make it make it nice uh, corner uh, uh, patio coat. Well, I'll leave that to the staff. I think they can guide you on that. But I think I would not want to alter it too much because then you're you're kind of uh, trying to match the house. I, I'm almost like the contrast rather than trying to. If you can't make it look just like the house in terms of the language, then I will leave it alone and try to just clean it up, maybe repaint it, and do some, some things to it at least to uh, complement the house. Uh, if, yeah. even we, if we uh, painted uh, the color of, I suppose, uh, door, door entry door, then it, it won't look right. like a with that. wood okay siding. It will right. look like something okay else. So I will leave that up to you and your staff. Okay, so just to um, reiterate so that we understand, if the garage roof can be um, altered so that it looks like it matches the house, then other details and um, et cetera should be also modified to match the house. But if, if the substantial changes aren't going to be made, then just to clean up the garage and not do very much with it? Is that? Well, I think the second part. The first part, I think we kind of got rid of because it appears that if they touch the roof, then the zoning uh, issues come in because now you're taking more than 50% and they probably have to add more space to the garage. So I think that would be too much of a hardship. Um, so I would say, since that's not possible, I mean, we could say what you just said, and if it becomes a hardship, then the second option is okay with us, I think. Okay, and so that... It's not really my motion, it's, it's, it's his motion. Yes, <laughs> so, so that would mean um, stuccoing rather than having the wood siding um, and just cleaning up the exterior. We even, I think we just, we're happy we're just painting it. Not okay. Really stuccoing, yeah. Okay, thank you for clarifying. That, is that yeah. okay with you? I, I think I prefer that, yeah. yeah. Is, is there an issue with the five foot seven spacing between the, the new construction and the existing garage? Is there some 
catch 22 on how close your garage can be to the the minimum requirement would be five feet eve to eve is it five feet oh, okay eve to i was eve. thinking it was greater than that okay eve to eve eve to eve, eve. oh yeah right yeah okay do we can you can i repeat and restate <laughs> your motion yeah uh, make Actually, a motion just amend the motion okay we'll amend it with uh, the qualifiers that we put on the garage as we said Okay. Is there a second? Uh, yes, I'll second. Very good. We have a second. Okay, that is a motion to approve the project with conditions. Motion by my Mr. Mr. Yu and a second by Mr. Ellis. This will be roll call. Mr. Yu? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. And Mr. Aliana? Yes. Motion carries 3 nothing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, wait a minute. Did you guys smell you? I just going to be a nice project. Yeah. Okay, what do we got? Capistrano, huh? All right. Can we take a... Can I take a break? Can we take a five-minute break? Sure. Can we have a five-minute break? Okay. Five-minute break? We're good. We're going to take a quick five. Uh, Chairman Pro Tem Aliano, board members. Case uh, third item on today's agenda is case number 1-PDR 2008-046-A. The project is located at 1309 Capistrano Avenue. The case planner is rather Duong. He is on vacation, so I am presenting the staff report on his behalf. The applicant is Ben Sturgill and the owner is Bernard Van Diet. All right. The existing property, as you can see here on the site plan, is developed with a two-story single-family residence, a pool, and an attached two-car garage on an irregular developed, irregular-shaped lot. The property sits at the terminus of Capistrano Avenue and slopes in the east-west and south-north directions. The project consists of constructing a first and second story addition totaling 228 square feet along with limited exterior renovations. The proposed addition <coughs> excuse me, and cosmetic changes will not alter the architectural style of the existing house, which will remain as minimal traditional. You'll see here in the front elevation, meaning the south elevation, there is existing one story that is to the west. There is a proposed one sto second story addition above that existing one story and then an enclosure of a rear patio area. The neighbors um, to, the, well, to the north and to the west are special recreation, public open space, and then you have single family development to the southeast and obviously the project site. There's a correction in the staff report. It was labeled as being in the Verdugo Woodlands East neighborhood is actually in the Verdugo Woodlands West neighborhood. So just want to make note of that. The three main components of the staff report. The first item is site planning. The modest addition will not change the footprint of the existing building and will not change the site planning of the project. As such, the landscaping will not be affected and will remain as is. And again, the majority of the proposed addition is just above an existing single story and uh, the port above the portion of the house that's currently one story. The remainder of the addition will be an enclosure of an existing covered patio into floor area located on the first floor. The second component is mass and scale. The size of the house will obviously increase only by 228 square feet. And again, the house with this addition will definitely not look massive as a, as a result of the proposed addition. The applicant has successfully created an addition that is sensitive not only to the existing style of the architecture, but as well to the surrounding property, properties and neighboring homes. Uh, the overall massing will be consistent with the existing structure and site plan and prevailing neighborhood pattern. Last component for the staff analysis is building design and detailing. The proposal is successful in blending the new addition with the existing minimal traditional home. While the home will appear slightly larger because of that second story addition, the existing and proposed areas appear to be harmonious with one another. 
In general, the building's exterior is visually appealing in its texture and color as various cladding materials will be utilized in the project. Staff's recommendation is to approve with certain conditions. These conditions are as the following. These would be four items. One, the proposed niche on the west side of the south elevation. This would be the one in question right here. Should be removed and an alternative treatment might be explored to break up the wall. The inclusion of windows would be ideal or alternatively construction of a trellis as suggested. Number two, the window opening should be recessed and should be treated with sills and borders that match the existing design. These would be the existing windows of the home. The third item would be to explore the possibility of adding additional wood shutters on the rear elevation to soften the look. And the last item would be to have a steel trowel deckle finish. Again, site planning, mass and scale, and the building design are all well done and well thoughtfully thought out and the addition is minimal. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. So the shutters, we're talking about the windows? I mean, like, there's only the shutters here. These are shutters here, and again, the recommendation is to actually add a few shutters oh, to the north the elevation to actually have a more cohesive right. look to the building. Right, right. Okay. Because the addition is just here, right? Correct. The addition is solely this piece right here. So there are existing shutters on the east elevation, they will simply be adding shutters to the new window of the second story addition, and the recommendation is to actually add a few shutters to, in random locations on the existing north elevation to actually tie all of the fenestration and shutter pattern together throughout the house. Thank you. Questions? You know, I don't have a card. Mr. Ben Sturgill, uh, and I apologize. I actually still have this card. Oh, no, we have so, My apologies. Ben Sturgill, the architect. And I would also like to make note of it. So I'm going to turn the seat. Okay. Since I, too, need to speak into the microphone, um, we have a letter from the Verdugo Woodlands West Homeowners Association, and this is from Myrna Stanley, their president, and it reads, please be advised that we support this project. I wish we had more similar projects in the Woodlands. And she left this letter <coughs> before leaving to watch the vice presidential debate. So. You can come up. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is Ben Curtis Sturgill. My office is located here at uh, Glendale at 314 East Broadway, Suite E. <coughs> and uh, yeah, before you is uh, our, our small project of uh, doing a little over 200 square foot addition. And, um, the uh, presentation that was made was uh, very accurate in what was being uh, done. Um, there's a couple things that we'd like to uh, address, which is uh, regarding the, the niche that was staff's recommendation of removing it. Um, the, uh, the concept of what we're trying to strive for in this area of the house is to create a, a media room down below on the first floor. And this is available wall space for built-in flat screen with cabinetry on the, uh, on the interior side. Therefore, windows would not be appropriate we do recognize the fact that something needs to be placed there to break up the mass of stucco. And we thought keeping, uh, trying to tie the stone element in with a stone niche would be appropriate. We would entertain possibly doing um, a trellis that surrounds or goes around on both sides of the, the niche, but keeping the niche intact, something that the owner is desirous of doing. Um, and having um, some sort of either bougainvillea or sino free grow up onto that trellis. Um, the intent of the, uh, our windows are wood windows to be in keeping with the existing windows. They will be insulated glass uh, throughout the building now, but they will be wood. Uh, they will have the same detail as they previously do have uh, with wood sills and 
and uh, slightly uh, recess. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, regarding the uh, shutters on the rear of the house, it's definitely possible we can do that, and the board can deems it as a condition of approval. We could definitely do it and would. Um, my question is, is who's going to benefit from these shutters? Um, directly in back of the property is, uh, as mentioned, SR property. It will never be developed except for outside recreational use. Uh, so currently the only benefit would be for the wildlife to, to view it. Um, plus there's a five-foot-high retaining wall that covers the portion of the first floor in the back of the property. So again, you're not going to see the, the total mass of the structure that runs across, uh, the retaining wall runs across the entire property or the, the width of the house at that point. So putting shutters on the house could be done, but is uh, questionable on the, the, the benefit. Um, regarding the stucco finish, uh, the existing stucco finish is uh, currently sand finish. And our intent was to match the existing, to, re uh, to uh, put a new finish coat over everything to blend it in. But we wanted to keep the, the cost down. Steel trowel is a little bit more expensive than sand finish, um, but to blend it in what was existing. So that was our, our intent of the project. And I'm here to answer any of your questions. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, I think, um, I guess this is happening throughout the house as well, these sort of asymmetrical ridges. Yes, that's correct. Or, and is that, what, what does that do to, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not following. You see how, you know, you have a center line, but the slope of this side is different than the back. Yes, that's, the, that's currently, that's the way the house that's has been built. Is. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we, you know, in our addition, we tried. We thought it would be appropriate to match the existing instead of emphasizing the different slopes um, for that small addition. All right. I don't have any other. I have a question for you. Um, it's noted that the retaining wall behind it is being replaced. Yes, it's currently has uh, developed some cracks, and we'll be needing to replace that. Right. So, and is that going to be uh, just a block, or are they doing like, any kind of? No. Uh, well, um, for the zoning ordinance, it'll have to be some type of okay. decorative right. material. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, I'm good. No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no other speakers, so I'm going to close the public session. Um, this was I, you, yeah, I guess I, there's, I need help today. Um, boy, I drove out there and looked, and I, I don't. I think the uh, architect is true that. The deer are the ones who see most of this house from almost all the angles. Um, I thought they've actually done a very nice job. When I first looked at the diagrams, the drawings, I thought it looked a little busy uh, with uh, different kinds of materials and so much of them. When I went out and saw, they, there's an improvement over what's existing. Uh, kind of a weird mixed rock look on the front of it. Um, I mean, I'll defer again to you gentlemen, uh, but uh, I'm ready to support them. Okay. To you. Uh, first, I want to just commend the architect. I think you did a great job of uh, your exhibits and showing the project and uh, getting us a good picture of what you have in mind to do. And so, and it helps us out greatly because, <laughs> you know, there's no guesswork to a lot of the things. And um, I think it was very sort of delicately done. Um, the niche, I'm okay with if, yeah, like, as, as it was suggested, to do some kind of trellis element next to it, I'm okay with that. Um, the shutters in the back, uh, I'd be okay if, if it's not part of the project. Uh, I would, uh, I'll leave it up to them. Um, all in all, I think it's a very good project, um, and I'd, I'd be ready to support it. Great, thank you. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to add except uh, nice job. It's going to look great, um, and I will support the project. Then do I, and forgive me because I'm, there were four staff recommendations as part of the staff yeah, project. Yeah, I think we, um, I steel think steel, we steel, steel trial finish is, sounds like it is not necessary. Well, um, maybe, uh, what, what's there right now? What is that? Sand it is a sand I finish. Probably need to match that. So we would eliminate that fourth item. Um, explore the possibility of adding additional wood shutters, which I hear from the board that that's not necessary. 
The window openings are going to be recessed and will be treated with sales and borders. So number two is not necessary. And number one, the niche will remain. However, I believe I'm hearing that a trellis, some sort of trellis feature should be added, whether it's on both sides or on one side. But does the board have a speci specification? I think one side's fine. I'm sorry, but I we'll just add which, which trellis the, the niche. front side, right? The oh, no, this, this would specifically be on that front elevation, whether yeah. Whether there should be a trellis feature on both sides of the niche or. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. I'm ambivalent. I don't know. Well, you were I guess if you're going to put it, put it on both sides. I don't know. Uh, a trellis right here? Um, I believe, and again, I'm, I was not the project planner for this, but that if the niche is not eliminated and if a window is not introduced, perhaps some sort of trellis feature. I believe he meant that the trellis feature instead of the niche, but perhaps a trellis feature on both sides of the niche. I'm not sure. I leave it up to him, but I do like the window. If, if you're going to eliminate that, I think to put something else there. I believe that there was a, an explanation that the window would not be consideration. So. Yeah, it's a Correct. No, there is a window in it, right? Yeah, on the side of it. Right here? Right. Right. Okay. I yeah, think I think that would that be where the black. Yeah, I think to the function they wanted to remove that, that window. We'll leave that up to you. I mean, if there has to be some treatment of that wall, and we'll leave it up to well, the. We'll just go ahead and say we'll consider treatment, and we'll actually work with Mr. Sergio yeah. then. So, and we'll just leave that one condition to, oh, to have some sort of treatment at that particular location. With that said. Um, there is also obviously a, an analysis portion, the site planning. Would you like me to read that into the record, or Please. do you need to? <laughs> you like it was part of your staff report. Or we read it. We liked it when we read it. Then I will incorporate, incorporate it, as, incorporate it as, as, as written. Okay. All right. And with that one condition, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve with that one condition. I'll second. And a motion made by Board Member Yu, a second by Board Member Ellis. Terms of a roll call, Board Member Ellis? Yes. Board Member Yu? Yes. Chairman Pro Tem Eliano? Yes. Motion passes, 3 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, staff would like to request a two and a half minute recess so that I can put up the old plans. Oh, what yeah. plans? Oh, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't let him go to the back. And we're back on. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. The last case item before you is case number PDR 2008 001 B. This applicant is actually the address is located at 1987 Starvale. The applicant is from Moravia. Uh, the Design Review Board last heard this case on May 1st. The board gave it a return for your design uh, with four conditions. I will later go over the conditions for your presentation. Uh, the board should have receive the attached staff report of the previous uh, meeting. Uh, the project is exempt from CEQA. The project proposal is in regards to construct a new 4,785 square foot two-story single-family dwelling on a 28,000 square foot lot. The board voted uh, leave to reach the turn. Actually, I've already read that. The project will include a new 734 square foot attached garage and is located on the corner of Starvale and Rimcrest. If I may just address the board's uh, orientation, these are the old sets of plans with the old elevations. Uh, down here we have a neighborhood comparison that shows all of the existing building footprints within the neighborhood of Starvale and Rimcrest. <laughs> and on this particular board, we have the new submittal plans showing um, the site plan, uh, first and second floor plan. Down there we have a panoramic view of the entire neighborhood new revised elevations along with perspectives and a landscape plan. An additional note, this project was one of the first projects to require a full um, full scale study. Sorry, Cole. Sorry. You got what they were doing. Um, yes, staff did it, in fact go out there and inspe inspect the story poles to see if they were accurately portrayed in, in respect to mass and scale and yes, staff does feel that it does appear and reflect the proposal accurately. Okay, the project is in the R1 R zone. 
Um, the project has, I believe, one conditional use permit that was processed early in the year. It was for um, a building on a hillside property with an average current slope exceeding 50%. That was approved by the zoning administrator. Therefore, um, now is moving on to design review. Okay, the, with respect to comments on the site planning, staff feels that the overall location of the building, driveway, garage appears to be appropriate for the project site. Context, uh, particularly in that the majority of the hillside remains intact and does not impose on any scenic vistas. The current site location or the site um, setup is largely on a pad. I believe we have a picture here showing that, that there is an existing pad and the proposed architecture and the proposed design does not impact. It's not on the dropping or the sloping down portion of the site. It remains solely on the pad. On to mass and scale overall. The project's mass and scale appears compatible in its relation to the site and neighborhood. There are at least seven other homes within the neighborhood that are that are three stories in height. The subject property proposes a new two-story home. The construction of story poles has been reviewed by staff and appears to reflect the math seen accurately as I have that. On to the architectural style and materials. While the architecture appears largely consistent with classical Mediterranean style, certain elements should be further refined. The openings at the second floor of the rotunda should be reduced and the consideration should be given to further reduce the second floor opening at the rear. This particular item is what we're talking about. Um, comments and conditions from May 1st. The board had four comments and conditions and they are as follows. Um, first comment was to achieve a reduction of retaining walls by following the natural contours of the slope. The applicant has addressed, addressed that in providing new retaining walls that are proposed to be to, proposed to follow the actual contours of the flow and I best like best reflected on, on the site plan. Comment number two, introduce the variation and adjustment in plate height. New variations in plate height have been introduced on all, of it, all elevations and appear to break up the massing. Comment number three, consider a reduction in overall mass and scale. The new proposal includes changes in height and variation in volumes that step back from the street. Recessed windows and wooden trellises have been incorporated to break up the overall massing. And the last condition on May 1st was consider narrowing the, narrowing the depth of the house at the deepest part of the house. The massing of the eastern edge has broken up within, into two stories and is quieter along the internal property line, which appears to be appropriate. Staff would like to conclude with this recommendation. The revised and updated project is consistent with the hillside design guidelines and is compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. Staff recommends approval of the project. That concludes my presentation. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. So the square footage is exactly the same? It's rough. It has not changed. I believe I can give you an accurate information right now. Floor area. Yes, it's stated on plans that it's Floria has changed. And actually, no, it's 4,819 square. It has stayed the same. Okay. All right. Questions? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Your turn, Mr. Oh, actually, do I have. Oh, Franco. Good evening, Mr. Chair and board members. My name is Franco Noravian, 409 West Broadway, Glendale, California, 91204 is my address. I am the architect on the project. Um, the way I understood your uh, concerns last time, um, if you look at the site plan that we had last time, there was a, um, a motor board in front, and that was actually one of the features that the owner uh, had requested is to be able to turn around on his own property and get out instead of backing up in, into the street. But as a result of the motor court, the house was getting pushed slightly beyond the existing retaining wall onto the hillside. And that made it look like a hillside house and 
therefore massive. You suggested that maybe we can step it down, but that is not acceptable to the uh, the owner. He likes the uh, the house to stay on one level. So as much as he didn't like giving up the motor court, uh, we had to do that in order to be able to put the entire house on the pad that's there now. And that reduced the height. Um, and and it's, of course, it's never that simple. I had to completely redesign it to uh, be a different house. Um, right now, it faces the corner. Um, and before it used to face Starvale. Now it just faces the corner of Rimcrest and Starvale. Uh, and I've been able to keep it all on the existing pad. The only thing that goes over is the proposed uh, swimming pool, which will be uh, like an infinity edge swimming pool. Um, so uh, the style of the house is uh, pretty much what we had last time. I incorporated a little bit more details into it. Um, as far as the staff comments, uh, there's only one window on the rotunda, so I don't know which, if you want me to make it smaller, I'm okay with that, but there's only one window. It's the one you see in that front elevation. Um, as far as the back, would prefer not to make it smaller because there's very nice views, obviously, from the back of this house, and um, we're trying to maximize the view. So. Uh, but if you have any questions or comments, ask. what is the height at, at, at the top of the 20, 29 feet from the pad? 29 feet. From the, from the, yeah. From the floor. 29 feet. I think, I think we dimensioned it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I didn't see it on the elevation. Um, anyway. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I guess in, I'd say a little more of a comment. I, the dining room is on the opposite side of the house than the kitchen. Um, uh, I, I'm uh, just looking. It's way over by the garage, the entryway, and the kitchen's yeah. in the other corner. Yes. You don't cook. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, it would seem to very <laughs> he odd. He just eats. Uh, he goes over <laughs> He doesn't serve. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's in the front yeah, and the dining yeah. room. The kitchen is in the back. Here's the yeah. kitchen. Right. Right. Here's the dining room. Like, you couldn't get any farther. Uh, right. I, well, upstairs. Uh, yeah. Do you have any room? What's the height limit? Uh, 35 feet, yeah. So these are slightly different yeah. in height. What is the difference? Uh, I think it's 9 and 10. The highest one it's is a 10-foot plate. Uh, yeah, it's a foot plate. Uh, Franco, there's a, there's a trellis here, right? But yes. It's not shown there. Uh, it's on the rear elevation. Yeah, but it's not shown on the model. So you put this out to a nice. Yes. Uh -huh. So it will be right here. Right. A it diagonal. Plan? It's a if you look on the diagonal. roof plan. So it's, it's a diagonal. Uh, where is our roof plan? It's not. No, it's not square. It's a triangular. Oh yeah, it's shown a little bit on the on the roof plan. Yeah, it's. You could you could make it right. You could make it. Um, but this view is actually the one that has this open. So right. If you brought it all the way out, then the, you get. The problem with making it uh, rectangular, I would need a post. I don't I don't want to have a post in there, because then. Well, the other side as well. The same, right, right. Right. So that's why that seemed to be. Right. Solution. Right. And the materials. What is that? Is that what is smooth it? plaster? What is all these? Just different colors. Uh, it's on our uh, sample board. Yeah. Different colors of pl plaster, and then uh, at the base, it's a precast. Precast. Yeah. Yeah. Three quarters or something. Yeah, but like stone, stone. Okay. Yeah. And, um, 
So with these, this is plaster? No. All the moldings are uh, precast. Okay. And what about the top? This is a gutter or? The gutter with that particular one, I'd like to do foam because nobody can see 20 feet up. Uh, but how do you treat it, though? Ah, thank you. Oh. Uh, like uh, st plastered, it would be a plastered molding, but not precast on, on the crown mold. Aren't you going to have gutters on this side? Yes, yes, we have gutters too. Okay, but is the gutter hidden behind the molding? Uh, no, I think it would. Can I come up? So we have gutter, the fascia, and then that's the precast. So what your point, this is the gutter, that's the fascia, and then at that point we have the... So the fascia is white wood? Yes. And then the molding underneath it? All right. Or we could wrap the stucco all the way and make the fascia stucco as well. What do you see underneath? Uh, just the crumb molding and stucco. So it, the, the eaves are stucco? Yeah, right? yeah. Eaves have to be stucco, yeah. Because of the zone? Right, right, zone. right. But actually, you bring up a good point. We could continue the stucco and go up so that there is no wood and it's all. I mean, it's, it's nice what you've done here because this treatment is different than that. Right. And just for the entry, uh -huh. uh, we did that. So. And these are what? These Th are those will be precast. precast. Mm -hmm. So you will call it this color and the bottom and the, and the, the soft, it will be the same. The same, correct. So this is the piece that you want to do the foam to? Yes. Okay, and that's just going to match the color of that. Correct. Right. And then this is a precast cap. Is it square? Correct. Is it square? Or no. Um, rounded? It, you can kind of see it there. A little bit of a uh, rounded, yeah. And is this the same or is that straight? No. Uh, that also has a... A little curve? Have, yeah, a little bit of a curve to it. We don't have profiles in that. Um, oh, kind of, you can... Good there. <laughs> Next time I'll bring that magnet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. If there's, there's no other comments. Yeah, I, wait, before Marco or questions. questions. Franco. Franco. Three colors of stucco. No, uh, I'm just trying to see where do they fall on. This is, let's say, the middle. Upper. So that's upper is upper up a top. That's, that's the and light. That's the middle. The, yes. And then this is um, basically the. It might not be exactly the color, but it's the color of the precast. <coughs> oh, I got you. Yeah. It's not stucco. It's not three colors of stucco. No, two colors of stucco plus the precast. And the precast. And that's the windows. And that's and the windows, right. And the trellis. Uh, the trellis would be the same as the windows mm -hmm. to match them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. This is the lower, that's the mid? Yeah, well, there's no third. This no. is the same as that, right? Yeah, that's the upper. That's that one. Okay. And then everything else is this one. The middle. And, so then, and then that middle. one is the stone down here. Nice. But is, um, Which? <laughs> it's so, I'm sorry, I'm No, I'm it's okay. It. This pattern, is that? That's a painted surface? I think it's a different stone, right? It's a stone. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the retaining walls, I'd like to do that in a um, uh, split face because the landscaping is going to cover most of it. So I don't see putting precast on there and then having it covered with landscaping. So this is all going to come up? Uh, it, um, no, it would be a split face stone, all the retaining walls. That, that's what I'd like to propose. Hmm. What color would that be? Yeah. The master hillside. Yeah, so and then you'll do anything that's touching the building will be this. Uh, absolutely. Because right you, you see in this elevation, it looks like they're in the same plane, but if you look at it, we're talking about this versus this. It's 20 right. feet apart. So all of this stuff here. Right. Um, if I may, um, Mr. Naravian, are all those materials clearly called out on the drawings? Yes. The, this, what you were just pointing at. There's some numbers that correspond. There are just ones here yeah, for. Uh, split face block. Oh, mm -hmm. you were just talking about the split face block. Under and nine? 
Nine is right there. Nine. And the other one is mm-hmm. recast stone molding. And the tile is, uh, what kind of tile is that? Is that a uh, two piece. <laughs> okay, because um, ju- just for clarity, because we rely on the drawings uh, and don't carry the tapes with us when we do our uh, our on-site review during construction. Anything that's not clearly noted on the drawings, we would recommend the the board provide as a condition of approval, so there's some record of right. what was approved. It's number it's three. Question. I don't see number three anywhere. Is oh. precast stone veneer? That's this. It's not noted. Uh, see it. Yeah, let's see it. Here. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it's a different page. Yeah, we should probably. Should we put it here? So it will be. And precast molding around doors and windows, number four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here. Right and the profile of that is the same sort of. A What's this one? Uh, split face. That's a split face. Yeah. The same as that. Yeah, yeah. But they're just. Okay. Got you. 20 feet difference between them. Got you engineered yeah. out. <laughs> And then this pre the crown molding is, um, is yeah, here, right? Uh-huh. So you would put that right at the corner where everything meets? Right, exactly. That's probably okay. All right. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, I'm going to close the public session. Mr. Yu, would you like to start? Sure. Um, it's, I think it's definitely an improvement from the previous plans. Um, the one thing that he brought up on how the house actually moved back towards the street more, uh, I think it, it makes a lot more sense to do it that way. Um, and doing away with the, with the large driveway actually allows for a much greener a corner um, as you approach the house from, from the street side. Um, the house still is pretty large. I guess it's the same square footage. so. Um, one of the comments that we had made was to try to play with the top plate and with the heights of it, and it looks like he did in one area, loaded a, a foot to try to do it. Um, I, I'm not too sure about this portion here. It feels like the tower or the, the rotunda area is just is squat and doesn't really fit in well with it. I'd almost like to see it come up a little more to have a mm-hmm. sort of a hierarchy to it. Mm-hmm. Um, in the rain, you can see it. Maybe a yeah, this one is, you yeah. know. You see more, don't you? Actually, I think this is a little more than that one. But, And then I'm not too sure about these two pieces that come out. Being a foot shorter, it's actually, but it's since it's coming towards you, it's actually going to seem a lot higher than that, and it's going to have a very large presence on the street. Um, I know that they can't really lower it anymore. You want to keep the second floor plate height the same, and then they reduced it a foot on the top. Um, but I think they're going to be very prominent on the corner, and everything is sort of going to just hide behind it. More than that elevation shows, I think these would be sort of the big pieces, and this would just kind of fade away at that corner. Um, but it, it's definitely an improvement from the other one. The massing is broken up a little more. There's pieces that are, uh, I guess, coming at you more. So, telling you, it has been. It's pretty similar to the other one. Uh, they did away with some of the the roof, the different roof elements. Um, I think that's it for now. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Um, yeah, I too would agree with you that it's an improvement over the last one. It, it's interesting that it didn't get any smaller. I mean, I, that was a little bit of the thought. But the other houses around it are, are all pretty big. Yeah, they're pretty big, yeah. Um, I, I'm, he's moving in the right direction. Um, I could support, I, I guess, and you know, maybe this part, the tower, the rotunda, you were talking about the, the window being so big, maybe that's because the rotunda is so small, or I, I see where you're going. And also on this picture, it does really jump out. 
You know, I, yeah, I, even I, that yeah. backside, you're right. That yeah, one. I mean, that one really, really leaps out. I think, and that's actually that's the back of this one. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's right back, back on that side, right? Yeah. So is that one right there? Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I couldn't offer a solution at that. Um, it's definitely moving in the right direction. There was a. I'm not crazy about styrofoam pieces, as I, Franco has heard me say before. I mean, he's picking the probably the one place where you could get away with it. <laughs> but uh, he's trying. He's trying. I mean, I don't know. Do I be dogmatic about it or not? Um, I, I, you know, I'll defer to you guys. But, uh, um, but it's uh, it's actually you know it's a nice looking house. I just I, I'm wondering how it will actually develop into a real structure. You know how. It, with the comments that you've made there. Did I help you at all? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I, I'm sorry. One last night. I guess and the, the last time there were a bunch of neighbors who were very upset about the project, but I mean, they were people who came would notify it again that it would be up. I'm presuming. And Actually, uh, no, no. There were. Uh, if, if they came and filled out a card, they did, but they had no opposition. Right. There was not, no, nobody in the neighborhood came out. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. So, right. Um, all right. Fairly large house. I, I think there are some nice things about what's happening here and here. here. There's a certain simplicity that I, that I like. You know, I'm, I'm questioning, and I, I can see why you do that. You have a bell course very high, high up, and there's quite a bit of height here. And I wonder, you know, if you try a scheme where the bell course maybe was a little bit lower, so that you could kind of mitigate that height a little bit. You know, I kind of like that. Though. I like this sort of you know, top uh, little cap that has a different color of stucco and then there's a bell course. I just wonder whether that something should happen there as well. Um, so, I, and I agree. I think this, the way it's rendered, it's probably a lot better than the way it's elevated because it looks like that is not really at that height. It's higher than the ridge. So I would vote for something that actually allows this to, s to go all the way around rather than dying into the cables or the, the, the pitch. Once you let it die into the roofs, it, it loses that nice sort of um, uh, formal thing to try to make. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, you might want to try making that maybe a little bit smaller, but I, I can see, you know, you don't want to make it too small because then it's sort of to get... Uh, so I, you know, this elevation, as I mentioned, has a little bit more balance. The one that troubles me the most is actually this one here. The one that you really more visible. And uh, I think what it is, what's doing it for me, I think, not doing it for me, is that there's, you know, one large opening, and this mass is just so overpowered, it's you know, two-story high all the way down. And I wonder if you try doing some kind of more light structure here, more like timber, you know, wood, with um, perhaps, you know, columns, maybe there could be some columns here, or post, with something a little bit lighter at the top, something quite different than all of these, maybe this, because the formality of it all is here, and then the rest of it, the kind of appendages, right, that kind of attached to the main two wings, and in fact, I would say that maybe this, which is, which is right here, almost too tall. I wonder whether you, you can do something with this because it not only shows up here, but it shows up around the corner. You know, you, you see this whole thing. So that's, that's the trouble that I'm having. I think there's something quite nice about these little openings with the balcony. And I realize why you have to have a big window there because you have to views. But maybe there's another way to do it. I, I am wondering what is the plan. Basically, this piece here. There's a way to arrange that. <coughs> Maybe the base has the, the more the, the massive pile, these sort of columns or pilasters. And as you go up, uh, you know, you could treat this as just maybe, like I said, something light structure, painted wood or something, which you're doing already. Well, actually, you can't do. You can't do wood here, right? You have to. You have to do some kind of plaster. I mean, you could. You could do some simple. 
wood, iron, you know, maybe wrapping it around. I, I think whatever you can do to sort of simplify, or not simplify, but minimize the size of that element. Uh, if I if I may just uh, pose a question, if the element uh, was broken up into several openings together rather than a, appear like a single large opening, right. maybe more similar to what had been done in the previous right. scheme. I think that view, I think, is this one, right? Right. I mean, if you could do an arrangement like that, that might be nice. The thing is that there are no gables in this house. Everything is hip. And I think it's okay. I mean, it's okay to keep everything hip. Um, I think actually we asked them to do one or the other. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to mix. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to mix. You know, here you're doing gables. Something quite nice about that. You've gone in that direction where you already said that that was okay. Um, whatever I think staff can do to help with that, I think that would be great. Um, you know, I'm questioning all these surrounds. I wonder whether it's enough to just do, a, you know, a nice strong horizontal, and a nice strong horizontal there with these precast pieces, and not even deal, you know, with, with wrapping everything. I wonder whether these could look better if they were just a bunch of opening with a nice bull nose and a nice sill and to clean and, and try to minimize all this. Because then once you do it, you got to do it everywhere, and I think it gets to be too much, you know, here. You're forced to do it here, you know. Maybe these kinds of things that will help. Maybe this just stops, and that's just a nice bull nose, you know. So same thing here. I mean, I think a sill and this stopping or creating a little lift there might be okay. Something to look at. I would defer to staff on that. I will support the project, but I would like staff to sort of shepherd this along based on the comments that we made. So, that's basically it. So that we understand clearly the comments, um, there seemed to be a consensus that the rotunda portion in the front could get a little taller so that the roof doesn't die into the adjacent roofs, um, and that perhaps consider an additional belt course, particularly at the front, uh, to uh, perceptually reduce the height. Consideration. Th yeah, that's yeah. a consideration rather than condition. Also consider the, um, the window at that rotunda to be slightly smaller, but not lose its hierarchical relationship with the adjacent windows on the other elements. Um, and I think those are all the comments we heard in the front. The repositioning of the house on the site and the greening of the front uh, is is all really positive, is what we heard. Um, going moving towards the rear elevation, uh, particular concern with that central element. Uh, consider the height of the central element and mitigating the large opening size because that makes that element appear out of scale. Uh, we had some comments about the details, and I didn't hear this specifically stated, but it was suggested that it should be conditioned that foam should not be used. Did we hear that or...? I, th I, I would go for that. I think the cleansing of the house has a lot of nice materials already. I mean, that I is also know. consistent with what the board has done in the past with other applicants, and we like to have that kind of thing be consistent. Um, and with that, it's I think those were all. One more about yes. the surrounds, the windows. Surround. Yes, of course. Um, to consider, and that's a consideration or a condition. Well, I think I will leave it up to you. I mean, if you feel uh, that they're moving forward by eliminating them, because they have to work out some details. Yeah, it I does seem. Knows. I, I do. Uh, staff tends to agree that the removal of the surrounds, with the exception of the sill, and since the windows are already deeply recessed, to have a bullnose plaster detail would exhibit a very high quality that has a consistency with the, the chosen style. Right, and then maybe just leave the surround at the front. You know, here is very important. And that makes that special. Okay, very good.
I see the applicant nodding, so I think this will be one of the easier ones for staff. Yeah, so yeah, thank yeah. you very much. All right. Great. Do we have a motion with the comments that uh, Ms. Wright just mentioned? Uh, I'll move to uh, accept PDR 2008-001-B uh, with the comments and conditions as noted. A second. Okay. That's a motion by Mr. Ellis, a second by Mr. Yu to approve with conditions. This will be roll call. Mr. Yu? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Aliano? Yes. Motion carries 3 nothing. Thank you. You remember the format? Do you remember why? I just noticed Which that. Which case is this? Just the one we just did with the last time it was here. I stained. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember that either. I don't, but. I don't remember ever seeing this card. I think you were absent then. Yeah, I don't think that's a mistake. So do you remember talking about moving <laughs> it on the... Well, actually, the, we'll double check that. No, I, uh, abstention no, I, versus... No, I'm just... I, because he mentioned he hadn't seen it before, and I had thought... I thought you were here, but I, then I saw that. I, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, that's, I wondered why, because I didn't hear anything. No reason to understand. No, sir. All right. I, I'll move acceptable approval of the minutes of September 18th. I have to sign these. Thank you. Huh? Motion made by Board Member Ellis, a second by... I second. Board Member Yu? Uh, Board Member Ellis? Yes. Board Member Yu? Yes. Board Member Eliano? Yes. Do I sign these? In, in yes, you, you are more than welcome to sign that. We only had one set of minutes. There are no staff discussion items. With that, is there a motion to adjourn at 7.23? I move we adjourn, just in time to miss it all. Just in <laughs> time to miss the, the vice presidential debate. I get the tape. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody